With the recent rush of fighting game players coming into the fold, fight stick businesses are slammed, and a common complaint I see is that so many of them are out of stock or in short supply, so it's difficult to acquire a controller. Even trying to find buttons and components to build your own all-button controller or a traditional fight stick aren't necessarily any better options because of the mass run on parts. But there's another option. You can actually assemble your own flatbox style controller. Today, let's look at some of the steps required to do so. This video was sponsored by PCBWay, a full feature custom PCB service, and we're going to utilize one of their enclosures in this video. Along with PCBs, they also offer CNC machining, injection molding, and 3D printing. They specialize in PCB prototyping and low volume production, so that means you're not going to have to order 50 boards in bulk to make this work. Plus, if you don't have access to a 3D printer, then they might be your one-stop shop for a project like this. I had the PCBs in hand already from my buddy The Train, but I'm going to utilize their resin printer services for part of this build. For this first step, we're going to look at the various flatbox diagrams and files on GitHub. This is all open source, so we're free to utilize these for ourselves. However, you'll always want to read the license beforehand to see what is allowable and what isn't. The original design is by Jay Fedor, and this flatbox is several revisions deep. We can examine the README to get an idea regarding the parts required. There are other versions of this, notably the SGF Bridget, as well as an RGB variation with a premium art case. We find the version we want and grab the appropriate files. Here I'll make use of the standard Rev4, as well as the premium version. Examine the appropriate files and familiarize yourself with the README. Settle on the variation you want, download the files, and look over that part list. We need to acquire our parts, and this may be the most difficult step. If you are comfortable soldering, you can graph the RP2040 Zero onto the flatbox PCB yourself, as well as install the tack switches for your aux functions. You could also utilize a supplier that can produce assembled PCBs. PCBWay is an option for pre-assembled PCBs, though you may have to order a small handful. To be clear, even ordering assembled PCBs can be an unfamiliar and multifaceted process if you've never done it, and I don't want to paint an oversimplified picture of the flatbox build process in this video. And even after ordering, you will likely need to make use of your soldering skills to install the hot swap sockets and the tack switches. You can skip the hot swap sockets and just put the switches directly on, but those will also need soldered. Now you can order with hot swaps ready to go, provided that the project files you chose include BOM and CPL files, but know that this will increase the price, because then the PCB will require double-sided assembly. You will need to be diligent and thorough throughout the process to make this happen. I'm using these PCBs because I have them ready to go. Here is what the PCB looks like for the Rev4 version, and this is what the PCB looks like for the Premium version. We'll get to the firmware here in a bit, but now that we have the guts, we'll need an appropriate enclosure shell, and these are typically 3D printed. If you have access to a finely tuned printer, you can do this yourself. But one of the biggest issues people new to this may run into is subpar print quality. Something can look okay, but still not fit together properly. The design is ideally looking for 0.1 millimeter XY tolerance, but in some specific problematic areas, you could open it up to 0.5 millimeter. There are multiple case options. Some styles come in two halves, and other variations include tiny little side panel inserts. Go with the one suggested in your original flatbox selection. I sourced this Rev4 shell from my fight stick buddy The Train, who has a higher end 3D printer, but to help demonstrate variety, I grabbed an additional shell for our advanced version from the video sponsor. Because resin printers are still pretty novel in my neck of the woods, I had PCBWay print this one in their UTR 8100 transparent resin. You will also require button caps, which you can 3D print as well. Alongside those, you'll need the appropriate screws for your case, heat set inserts, and 12 KL low profile chalk V1 switches of your preferred switch type. At the end, you'll also need a USB-C cable to connect it to your PC or console. Amazon or similar online vendors carry all those components. Now that you've sourced and printed your materials, you can move on to step three. You have your PCB at this point, and so now select your favorite flavor of switches and install your button caps. Red linear switches seem to be the default selection, but you can utilize whatever you'd like, and I have another whole video about different switch types here. Then, when all 12 switches are complete and prepped, 
insert them into the sockets on the PCB. Simply press firmly while maintaining some pressure against the back to pop them into place. Install the appropriate firmware. You'll need to utilize code for a USB arcade controller meant to be used with RP2040 based boards for these units. Once you have the appropriate files downloaded, you can flash the firmware. Simply connect the board to your computer with a USB cable. Then press the reset button while holding the boot button on the RP2040-0. A new drive should appear on which you can copy the UF2 file. We want to flash the firmware and test buttons beforehand just so we don't spend time assembling a PCB that doesn't work. We can test it now to confirm there are no issues. Now we need to look at our enclosure. We will want to install some heat set inserts so that we can utilize our screws. You can use a heat set insert tip on your soldering iron, but you could also use a standard cone tip or whatever you've got. I'm using a standard tip here. Place these inserts into the divots on the underside of the top panel with the fatter end of the inserts facing upward. Then, gently press your soldering iron against the insert. It will warm and begin to slightly melt surrounding material. Press downward and take care to keep them as straight as possible. I think my soldering iron was around 350 degrees and it took less than 5 seconds per insert. Lay the board inside and sandwich the enclosure halves around it. Screw it all together without over tightening. Then plug it in with that USB-C cable and test everything out. You should hopefully have yourself a nice little all button controller. If it's all good, jump into ranked and start cracking skulls. It is at this point that you can also epoxy the rubber feet to the case if your enclosure version allows. Good luck with your own flatbox project. This video serves as a basic overview to start getting you familiar with the parts of the process, but make sure to read everything on GitHub before you begin to save yourself time. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Maybe in the future we can utilize their services for some custom PCBs or a 3D printed fight stick enclosure. Let me know what you'd like to see in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for watching. Support your locals, and I'll see you next time.